My name's Karen Gabay. I wear a few creative hats. I'm a radio presenter, a reporter and producer. I'm also a podcast host and producer of podcasts. I am a TV producer, TV documentaries mainly, popular culture documentaries um, and entertainment shows and music shows. I am also a filmmaker, so I make films about social histories, particularly of Manchester and the North West, and of how the black diaspora relates to other communities. The reason why I went down that route was I could express myself without us being told no, nobody's interested. <laughs> and, and I could also give other people a voice who are constantly saying, I've got a story to tell, I've achieved this, other people have achieved this. And by going into that arena, it has allowed me to do that over the last decade. Diversity is a word that's thrown about a lot. And I mean, when I think of diversity, I mean about class, about people who are often seen as not deemed to be right. And it's really important to me in whether I'm doing films, whether I'm doing documentaries for TV, whether it's radio, I don't think there's enough of it. And really that's what I think the creative industries anyway as a whole should be doing and if you work in that industry. If you're creative, you should be creative about who makes it behind the scenes and who makes it in front of the screen. And as a black creative, it's a really interesting um, point to debate because there are opportunities, but sometimes because of your background and um, what your family does, you aren't always aware of those opportunities. And sometimes even if they're offered to you, you don't know what to do with them because there's nobody else around to discuss how you approach that or what you do. Sometimes when you're in institutions or systems, you you, you just don't follow them through because you just think, oh, well, I've got, I've got every round to, who's gonna come with me to film that interview? who's going to come with me or who kind of like gets it. And, and this is sometimes a personal thing. It's about even when you're offered opportunities to network, uh, it's a key one because sometimes while we feel othered, so we're really frightened to step into that space and do the networking. And it's really something that I'd encourage people to do even if you don't like it. Just take somebody along with you. Even if it's somebody not from the creative profession who's there for you as well. That's why you see sometimes people who do make it always have a little team of people around them. Because it just means it's like a comfort blanket, but it's also someone else pushing them along. And I think networking opportunities are always there. They were there back then. Um, and also sometimes opportunities are just attending things. I mean, I did do. One thing I always did, I attended, whether it's debates, whether it was marches, whether it was concerts, I did the, do those because uh, I felt kind of comfortable and intrigued enough to do those. And I took advantage of those and that's why I have got a really good network because I did take those up. And they can be, you can make your own opportunities in that way. There's two ways to look at um, openings or opportunities for black women in the creative industry. There is a definite um, advantage to black women creating their own opportunities within either professional networks or with their friends and going the independent route. You can see that black women who've done that have really begun to make waves and then the mainstream industries take advantage of the knowledge and the um, inroads that they've made and bring them into the fold. And also it allows you as a black woman to do things from your own perspective. As regards to being a black woman trying to get into mainstream established companies and industries, I think it's harder than it has ever been. I still think no matter how well you do, you're always asked to uh, sometimes go a step kind of lower or to prove yourself because you still feel like um, if you don't do well, they're just going to be replaced by another black person because it's because it's still that there can't be a, a group of you as black people. It's still one or two that we'll have on a team. I think that it's been made particularly harder for people to kind of to, to get in and to and also you know yes you may uh, you may allow people in at entry level, but management level uh, I just don't see. Black creative women. I couldn't list you endless numbers of black women in the creative industries who are heads of companies. I don't buy that actually we are the minority, we're the global majority in the world. People uh, want to um, take part in our culture, you know, 
whether it's hair, the fashion, the style. You know, I'm of Jamaican heritage. Everybody knows the Jamaican flag. Everybody loves, you know, whether it's kind of music, sport, entertainment, social affairs, politics. There's always something joyful or inspirational that comes out of that. And, you know, uh, so you can't say that even though it's a small island that it's not got an impact. It's the same as Ireland is a small island, but it's had a massive impact on the world with the, the biggest bands, you know, politicians that you know about, poets that you know about. And I just don't buy that always go, well, there's only 6% of the people that you're talking to. No, there isn't because the other majority of people uh, love that culture. And that's the, that's the biggest part of it. And I don't see why it's so difficult to understand anyway, to try and, 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 and um, understand somebody's point of view. If they are a minority, what's the harm in just including that in your vision? So I think, I find that the most challenging, trying to get people to understand that. You know, I've had some amazing times working in the industry and if I hadn't gone into the industry I would have just lived a life full of regrets because I have had some kind of like great moments and I have had some laughs and I have had some of the best times I've made some wonderful programmes that I'm really proud of for TV and made films of my own that I'm incredibly proud of um, but I just would um, I just think that as I've said before the playing field should be kind of like more evened out Americans say that there are teachable moments and one of the highlights of my career was when I wanted to celebrate a um, series of um, African-American actors and also um, white actors who'd taken part in a series called Roots. It took some time to get the celebration documentary off the ground, but a lot of the cast involved in that and the writers had also had to make sacrifices in order to make it happen. And um, when we went to America to talk to them, I got pet talks off every single one of them about, you know, it's important sometimes if you believe in something to kind of like stay with it and follow through because there will be people who support you. Look, we're all supporting you. you know, so basically they all decided to make the pact to come through and take part. And um, there's a woman who I'm going to mention who is a trailblazer. She's called Beth Ann Hardison. Beth Ann Hardison is Tyson Beckford's agent manager and Naomi Campbell's. But she was a real activist about changing um, how models of colour, black models, were viewed in the industry. And she agreed also to take part in this series she was always like remember the power of you know just remember the power of your positivity and what you kind of like want to achieve so she even turned up on the set she did to do an interview but she said i'm just here to be with you to support you and it was just sometimes when you think you've got to believe in people haven't you and it was a great moment that so beth ann turned up in new york she found what i mentioned in here was the, one of the leads I couldn't find, my colleagues couldn't find, she just decided to move part of the year to Mexico and she said, oh Olivia who you're looking for lives up the mountain where I've moved to in this remote part of Mexico. Olivia came down the mountain and it took her days to travel to New York and came and did the interview. We, now we talk about for the culture don't we? The culture is important, if we can come together, um, we can support each other and so as well as just taking part in it, it was also good to know, to, just to remind you that um, believe in people because they will support you. And the guy who's commissioned it was a white commissioner from, a white head of TV from the UK called Brian Cowgill and he passed away now. And um, he was one who's commissioned a lot of the diverse programmes back in the 70s. And he also gave me a pep talk and said, you know, always find people like you found kind of like me you can always find people who will support you so basically what I'm saying it's about it's a great highlight because there's all these amazing names who we know the names of them still they've got legacy but it was also a pep talk in finding your allies and sometimes I don't think we're taught to do that in the last year there's been great talk haven't there since George Floyd about allyship but that was a lesson they really taught me about you know find your allies and Sometimes don't dismiss um, what you think people will offer and give to you and support you. So an amazing piece of advice I got from Candidor, who's a jazz musician, 
was about how you navigate the industry. So I'm a big Prince fan, as people know. She um, had been touring with Prince for some time and Prince adored her, but she wanted to get on and do her own thing. She wanted to go back. She's had a great career, she wanted to go back to it. And um, as a female, it's, it's sometimes hard to kind of like speak up and let your voice be heard. So she said, um, she told me about that story and what she did and then her advice was, if you ever feel that people aren't listening to you um, or and you really want to kind of pursue your vision, just write a letter. Or if somebody does something to you in the industry and they might not realise the impact of what they're doing or they're not really hearing you, then um, write them a letter and tell them how you feel. I asked Maya Angelou for an interview and Maya Angelou changed her mind and said no, just a really last minute, so I wrote a letter. And um, she changed her mind and a few years after that, there was a couple of times she had birthday parties in England and I got invited. But it's, but the key point of it is about Sometimes it's hard to express yourself and you can get frustrated, don't you? Or you don't know why somebody's something could have happened and you just like it's another way to express yourself to write a letter. Don't be afraid to ask questions. No matter how silly you think that question may be. Um, everybody comes from a different background, everybody has different openings to information. And if you don't ask questions, that kind of stays with you as you go through your career and you might be really good at, at, at getting things right but by not asking questions you can miss things and you don't have the great understanding of being in that arena that you could have had if you'd asked questions. Even if somebody wants to laugh at you for asking that question you don't know, you still need the answer. And network with people outside of your group so that you can for somebody you can call even if you've got an idea who can give you a different perspective. My, um, the slogan that I like to uh, use um, as one of affirmation is something that a lot of creatives who have really felt that they were about to turn their back on their career and an opportune moment has happened and they switched it around and it's if you dream it, you can be it. And it's a bit like athletes, isn't it? They always say they can see themselves over the finish line. And, and there are so many people I've spoken to who have done amazing things and they've said that because they thought about those words, that was the thing that stopped them throwing the towel in. And then, and then, you know, literally, you know, five years on or six years on from trying to get in, something happened for them, but it also happened for them in a big way.